Yo, good Springsteen song. Peter King will join us at 925. Joseph Abu, Denny Potman, Peter King, Emilio Estevez, still to come. And Mooch is here. The great Anthony Scaramucci. First of all, Mooch, I want to thank you. Your great restaurant, Fish and Hunt Club in New York City, made for the perfect setting to celebrate my daughter Ava's 15th birthday on Saturday night. And your staff did an amazing job. So thank you so much. Well, I, hey, I, I got to tell I got to tell all your listeners that you were not a Gavon <laughs> on Saturday night. They, people were telling me that you weren't eating that much, Sid. So what's going on? You, you got a medical condition you want to no, tell everybody about? No, or? you're in my head now. Now, whenever you're, I go out to eat, I'm like, oh, my God, Mooch is going to make fun of me. <laughs> no, I mean, you, 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 you have very low you know, fat to body ratio. So right. I'm impressed with all that, Sid. But, you know. Anyway, I got you know, the whole scouting report from those guys. God yeah, bless you. And they happy were great. birthday to Ava. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. They were great. So, listen, we, we talked about your appearance um, momentarily, a while, a couple of minutes ago, with Chris Cuomo on Monday night. And we'll get into those details. But then some lady called up from New Jersey. She said, hold on a second. Scaramucci is no friend of Donald Trump. I, I said, wait a second. He talks to Trump. They had a, a conversation recently. Just because you may be critical of somebody, just because you've got criticism for somebody, Trump ain't perfect. He's not even close. Doesn't mean you're not friends. But the, the ardent Trump supporter feels like if you're not with him 100% of the way, then you can't be friends with him. That's ridiculous. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't like that test. And, I'll, and, I'll, and I, would, I would say to that, that person, of course I'm with him. I, I don't want to count up the time and energy that i put into his campaign or the hundreds of hours of media support that i've given him but what you can't do you can't be running a cult where it's one zero uh ed koch had a great line he said if you believe in what i'm saying nine out of 12 times you should vote for me if you believe what i'm saying 12 out of 12 times you need a psychiatrist there you go okay and so so you know no offense to her or anybody but the president cannot separate women and children from the border. And then when he pushes back and says, well, the Obama administration started it and they did it and this, that, and the other thing. Okay, time out, Mr. President. They hate you, the media. Let's give you the news flash. They're going to have 500 cameras down there and they're going to run it every single night and they're going to run your administration and you personally and your campaign into the ground. They're not going to do that to somebody like President Obama. If he made a mistake doing that, they'll have no cameras. But in your case... They'll have 500 cameras, guys. And you want to know why? Because life is unfair. That's just the way the world works. Me, I'm telling him to knock it off so that he can get reelected. So if she thinks that I'm going to be one of those sycophants that tells people that Trump doesn't lie and that tells people it's a good idea to go after dead people uh, and tells people that it's a good idea to go after the press every day when you're the leader of the free world, I'm not going to do that. No chance I'm going to do that. I'm my own guy, Sid, built my own company, came from nowhere. Um, and I think it's important for the president to hear. Well, I think we lost Anthony Scaramucci, and I was just going to hit him with a really good question. Still Anthony, still there? Yeah. Hey, Ant. Yeah, I'm still here. I don't. I don't know. My, I, I know. I'm, I'm on this new radio app that you guys get. It sounds good, actually. But when, I'm, when but you, I'm saying my, I don't know if you got the last point. Go um, ahead, finish it. Yeah, but I, I don't know if you got my last point, which is about you no know, the free press. Stop making fun of dead people. Yeah. Don't separate women from children, and you'll probably win by a landslide. Right. Okay? No, if somebody no doesn't doubt. like me saying they think I'm not a friend of the president because of that, then they're, they're missing the whole point. Well, let me just... So uh, those three things are going to stop him from getting moderates and independents, you know? That, you're you're absolutely are right. with him are already with him, guys. Right. They're, they're going to savage him if he uh, does something like that. But the, the real issue at the border, of course, is not separating women from children and that's what cnn will not focus on the real issue which is that we have a a, ca a category five catastrophe going on there and the fault lies with the democrats in congress they won't fix the laws they won't cooperate with the president and it's not sustainable it's a terrible terrible problem they want to focus on fringe issues like the separating of uh, kids from families which by the way the president said he's not going to do and they won't focus on that uh, they don't care about it. All they care about is bringing up an issue that might make the president look bad. But what about the Democrats' culpability in this disaster down at the southern border? Well, they're completely and totally culpable because 18 months ago, 16 months ago, the president was trying to cut that deal. He was trying to get 
a DACA piece of that deal, some uh, reform for the Dreamers into the immigration. The, the, they looked around and they said, oh, my God, if he cuts this deal, we're not going to win the House. So they ran after the West Wing microphones and they started saying, oh, well, the president said some mean things about the countries these people are coming from. So therefore, he's a racist. And you know, they throw out the, that he's a racist the way you and I are taking out the kitchen garbage every night. Racist, racist. He's not a racist. He, want, he recognizes you cannot have an open border when you're living in a welfare state. Okay, Milton Friedman, who won the Nobel Amen. Prize, now deceased. If you have an open border, when you have a welfare state, people will pour across the border and participate in your welfare state. Absolutely. You have to protect your citizens. Uh, and what, and and what that's the president pe- did by cutting, cutting the slack at the border, he popped the wages. Now that's the, and that's, the, uh, I guess, the, the crux of uh, the beef with people like CNN. They're the ones who repeat this racist stuff. And, again, they don't focus on the issue that I – the aforementioned issue, the border, the bleeding there, uh, the unsustainability that you can't have a welfare state and an open border at the same time. Mathematically, it's, a, it's, it's just going to ruin this country. It, it's like smoking. You're not going to die today, but you're going to die eventually. I completely agree, Bernie. I mean, I, I, I totally agree. So, anyway, look, I get it. People want to be 100 percent in the tank for the president. I appreciate that. But his path to victory is through moderates and independents. You're already with him if you're with him. We have to convince those people that are on the fence that he is the best choice for the economy, national security, and their children's prosperity. Well said. Let's talk about a guy that is an awful like like President Trump and looks like he's going to win his fourth consecutive term. And his fifth term overall, which may, would make him, by the way, the longest reigning prime minister in the history of Israel. Uh, and I know, uh, Mooch, you're a big uh, Israel supporter. Looks like Netanyahu is going to win again. Good news for Israel. Good news for the United States. Where do you stand on that? Uh, listen, very good news. I'm a huge fan of his. Um, he recognizes that... Uh, and I'm, I'm afraid to say this, but there will likely not be peace for Israel in our lifetime. But what he's been able to do, he's been able to create security for Israel and the Israeli people. And this has allowed that economy to flourish. And so uh, he'll have an amazing legacy. And this last couple of years, if he's able to win again, he can fortify and solidify and, and make the stuff that he's doing from a policy perspective permanent. So, yes, I'm a huge fan. The brilliant Anthony Scaramucci on the Bernie and Sid Show on WABC Radio. Anthony, of course, the Mueller report out. Uh, We're going to get the full uh, version from uh, the Attorney General next week, he says. But the upshot is no evidence of collusion. Now you have this House Judiciary Chairman, Adam Schiff. He said that there was direct evidence that the president colluded with Russia. And he's still implying that that's the case. What's wrong with this guy? Well, there's nothing wrong with this guy. He's just using the, the, the same playbook that they've used over and over again. Hey, hey, guys, these people want to rule. They do not want to serve. Do you understand that distinction? And the way you rule is you rile up your base. You say nonsense. You send out the form letter. They send you the money. They come to, they come to vote for you. And normal people say, wow, these people are terrible. I'm not going even to vote. And that's what, that's what Adam Schiff and these clowns are doing. Um, and, you know, I was at my 30th Harvard Law School reunion on Friday night with Rod Rosenstein, who was in my section. And I told the president repeatedly that Rod is like a Boy Scout. He would never do anything wrong. And he played straight for the president. And, and when I ran into Rod on Friday night, he says, finally, the president had figured that out. You know, now that the report is out and the facts are the facts, there was absolutely no collusion. But I've been telling you guys that for two years because I worked on that campaign and I worked on that transition team. We, there, there was no go- The president can't even collude with his staff, fellas. He <laughs> no. can't collude with his staff. Right. How is he going to collude with the Russians? That's a great point. Now, listen, okay? on the I mean, way out, on. yes, on the way out, another great appearance here by Anthony Scaramucci. But the real question that needs to be answered has nothing to do with the Mueller report, nothing to do with Bibi Netanyahu, Chris Cuomo, or some caller from New Jersey. The real question that needs to be answered right now, Mooch, is this: Will Bernie and Sid be in Las Vegas? A, th- a thousand percent. When oh. your show's over today, you and I are going to work on this thing. There we go. And I'm going to flood the zone with guests. If you go to 
If you go to salt.org, you'll see all the great guests are going to be on the Bernie and Sid show uh, May 7th to the 10th. Wow. Awesome, Anthony. Exciting. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for this appearance. Thank you for helping out with Ava. Thank you for Let's, Vegas. Thank you for right. everything. Let's go Mets, guys. Let's go Mets. Yes. Oh, and, my and God. And Islanders. Come there on. There you go. Thank you, Anthony. Boy, take up the Grom. Let's go Mets. Ay, ay, ay. That was his first, like, bad start in years. I know. It's a little heartbreaking, but uh, the guy was due, I guess. I guess, let's yeah. Just, uh, Can't knock him, right? Let's not panic. You know what they're blaming this morning? They're blaming the catcher, Travis Darno. For what? What did he do? First game back since Tommy John, and they're saying that he called a bad game. No, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't right. Mets got blown out by the Minnesota Twins. Danny Potman, actor Emilio Estevez, Joseph Abood, Congressman Peter King. Your phone calls and measles in Williamsburg. We're just getting started.